What's going on Island Hoppers? Today we're coming to you from Las Vegas, Nevada. We're gonna talk about the things you need to know when visiting this beautiful party town. Let's do it. So let's talk about where to stay. So there's Fremont Street, which is where I'm at right now. So Fremont Street is considered a pedestrian mall and it is an attraction right here in downtown Las Vegas. This is actually where Las Vegas originated, the city core here in downtown along Fremont Street. Some popular places to check out. Circa, they also have the Pioneer Club, the Golden Nugget, which is really cool. We'll show you that in another video. And then there's the Las Vegas Strip. The Strip, also known as Las Vegas Boulevard, is actually located in a town called Paradise, which is an unincorporated town in the metro Las Vegas area. Also connecting to another town known as Winchester, but it is 4.2 miles long, with many large hotel casino resorts, including Hilton Resorts World, Venetian, Bellagio, Paris Paris, Caesars Palace, and Mandalay Bay at the very southern end of the Strip. All right, so a lot of people want to know where is the absolute best place to stay in Las Vegas. In my opinion, Cosmopolitan, if you can afford the prices, but there's a hack. If you can't afford the price of Cosmopolitan, you can go right across the street to something like uh, Planet Hollywood or right next door to something like Paris or go across the street from there to Caesars Palace. You'll find better prices. But this little area right here from Caesars Palace, Bellagio, Cosmopolitan, Aria, across the street, Planet Hollywood, that's really the best part of the strip. It's like the center, it's the heart of it all. That's where you really want to be. And I'm giving you that advice because I've been here enough times to know. All right, let's talk about money here in Vegas. So when you go to the ATM machines, the ATMs inside the casino are like eight to $9 fees, and that's on top of fees that are also initiated by your bank. So if you can, try to go to a bank outside of the strip typically a Bank of America or Chase or one of your local banks instead of getting money from the actual casino. Yeah, when it comes to food in Las Vegas, expect to find lots of Wagyu beef. I think that if there's anything that stands out to me, it's the abundance of Wagyu beef, especially since it's such expensive beef. For a small six ounce steak, I've paid as much as $220 I didn't even know the price when the waiter asked me, so verify the price. There's also lots of sushi restaurants. These are mostly going to be gourmet restaurants. You're gonna have everything from Gordon Ramsay to Wolfgang Puck, all the way on down the line to some of your other favorite celebrity chefs with restaurants right here in Las Vegas. And they're all really gonna be gourmet. And then of course, they're gonna have that food that you have when you're drunk and you're trying to just get some carbs in your stomach to soak up all that alcohol. We know how it goes. That's basically drunken food. You know, the restaurants are gonna be open sometimes. And in Las Vegas, because it's a part of the Southwest, you can expect to find lots of Mexican food, fajitas, also plenty of Italian restaurants, plenty of variety like rigatoni, and regular spaghetti noodle. Also, they're going to have some healthy food alternatives like a salad with just steak or chicken, also avocado and toast, fish and chips. Also, they're gonna have some pizza. This here is a Pizza Hut pizza, but they've got a lot of different pizza parlors. They've got Caesar salad with chicken, cucumber salad, and then for breakfast, you can see here's a wide variety of selection. For example, they've got salmon tartine, they've got egg tartine, they've... and for dessert, you'll be able to find warm chocolate lava cake, frozen custard, you name it. This is Las Vegas. They're gonna have lots of dessert variety. All right, let's talk about hidden fees and how they can get you here in Las Vegas. One of them is resort fees. You'll go on kayak or hotels.com or booking.com and you'll see that the hotel is $79 to stay at New York, New York. And then when you get there, you realize that it's a 40 to $50 resort fee. That's just one example. But every hotel, especially on the Strip, is going to have a resort fee. For example, you'll look at Haraz. Sometimes they'll have $29 rooms and you get there and you realize that there's a $40 resort fee. So that's how they get you at these hotel resorts. All right, let's talk about your health here in Las Vegas. What do you need to know in preparation for coming here? Obviously, it's very hot in the summer, but did you know that in the wintertime, it gets very cold? Yeah, so here we are, middle of February and it's snowing. You can see little snowflakes right there. So. Uh, there's going to be different things that you're going to keep in mind, but generally bringing sunblock for Las Vegas is a good idea. Also, dehydration, very easy out here because we are a desert 
in Las Vegas. So when you come out here, make sure when you go to bed, you drink something with electrolytes or water. Otherwise, you'll wake up with a dry mouth feeling parched, especially since we're here in the wintertime. When we wake up in the mornings, the heat's on and it's very dry and arid. So you wake up with a dry mouth. I just want to say dehydration is very possible. Make sure you drink a lot of water and electrolytes and liquid when you're here. Let's talk about ways to save money. So the big way to save money above all else is to not come during peak season. Peak season is basically from January until about May. Some say give or take a month in either direction. Summers, not so much a peak season. And before uh, Christmas, not so much a peak season. So if you wanna save money, those are the times to show up. Now, also another thing that affects the prices is going to be conventions or events, something like the Super Bowl, something like a holiday or a big mega convention all drives up prices where they go from $39 a night at the New York or the Venetian. If you get lucky, you can find it for $39 at the Venetian, but then they go up to like well over 100 on those nights because of peak demand. So that's one way to save money when coming to Las Vegas. All right, let's talk about attire and things to wear when visiting Las Vegas. See, Las Vegas is a place where you can really dress up or you can also dress down. In the daytime, I would say jeans or slacks with a collared shirt, maybe even a t-shirt just walking around. Definitely have a pair of walking shoes, preferably some Nike cross trainers or some Reeboks, whatever your favorite brand is. But then also, summertime, bring some flip-flops, especially if you're gonna be hanging out at the pool. It just depends on the season, but if you're here in the winter, bring a coat. Also, at night, that's when you really wanna dress up, so this is the time to bust out the tuxedo or the suit, whatever you have for dress clothes. Ladies, you know, your favorite dress that you've been waiting to wear that you never actually wore. That's where you're gonna bust it out here in Vegas at night when you're going to the Cosmopolitan or the Bellagio to one of these nightclubs. If you're here in the summertime, it's gonna be hot walking around the strip, so probably dress accordingly. We're talking well over 100 degrees out here in Las Vegas during the summer months. Let's talk about transportation getting around Las Vegas. Obviously, as you can see, they do have rideshare. I found that to be the easiest way to get up and down the strip. Now, you can rent a car, but the problem with renting a car versus rideshare is parking. So if you do decide to drive, you're gonna have to pay for parking in each one of these resort casinos. But who wants to drive when you're drinking when you could just take rideshare? To go from, say, the New York, New York, to the wind cost me about $15 in a taxi. So it's rideshare, a taxi, they also have a bus, they have a hop on hop off tour, and they also have parking for you who want to bring your car, but I would say rideshare and taxis are the best way to get around the strip. And if you wanted to go from the strip to Fremont Street, it's gonna cost you about $25 each way. And as you can see, they also have a monorail tram that takes you from resort to resort. Now the Mandalay Bay to the uh, Excalibur is a tram, and then they have one from Aria all the way to the Bellagio area. So here's some interesting facts about Las Vegas. Did you know the Strip is actually not located within the city limits of Las Vegas? It's in paradise. Also, they have 22,000 conventions per year. 41 million people visit Las Vegas every year, and it's actually voted in the top 10 every single year as a foodie city in the United States. Something you should know about Las Vegas, it's a nighttime city. Yeah, there's activities to do in the daytime, especially adventure activities like a helicopter ride over Grand Canyon, going to Valley of Fire, but really Las Vegas doesn't start coming to life until two or three in the afternoon. Right now is peak time, it's around 6 p.m. That's really the time you wanna start hitting the town, especially if you wanna go out on the strip. So one of the big questions is how many days do you need in Las Vegas? You could do 24 hours and see a lot of Las Vegas. Like Las Vegas is a 24 to 48 hour city. But really, I would say you need 72 to 96 hours in Las Vegas, that's three to four days. So if you come to Las Vegas, prepare for that time frame, three to four days, and you will see much of the Strip. And you can even do Fremont Street, which is downtown. So I would say three to four days is the best time frame for Vegas. Seven days is too much. 24 hours is not quite enough if there's barely wet your palate. So there I go. 
And when it comes to drinking in Las Vegas, it is open container walking along the strip. So that's a convenient thing for a lot of people who are going from casino to casino. Also, one more thing I want to point out is, yes, they do have cocktail waitresses. When you're gaming, they will give you free alcohol. Although it seems like what it's going to cost you to put the money in the slots, unless you're winning, it's usually going to be a really expensive drink to sit there and wait the 15 to 20 minutes for your cocktail waitress to come out. Also, I consider Las Vegas to be a dream come true for people who are really big into a variety of different alcohols. If you consider yourself a connoisseur, Las Vegas has you covered with so many variety of cocktails. Also, one more thing, guys. If you're looking for things to do in Las Vegas, check the link description below because we did put 50 things to do in Las Vegas down below, as well as a full travel guide of Las Vegas and Las Vegas best hotels. All links in the description below. So one of the things to know about Las Vegas here in 2023 is that they are developing the north side of the Strip. This area where Circus Circus is, you look right across the road there, we have the Convention Center for Las Vegas, and then they're also building Fountain Blue Las Vegas right next to this big building. So they're really building up the north side of the Strip right now. The south side of the Strip seems to be silent, no real projects going on. And right around here is actually where they built the uh, Hilton Resorts World. So it seems like most of the emphasis is going north on the Strip. Now, obviously, there's lots of casino gaming to be had here. They're going to have roulette. They're going to have craps, lots of slot machines. And for me, I do have an opinion on some of my favorite casinos that I game at. Mandalay Bay, New York, New York. So basically, the MGM properties I like. I also like Venetian, Paris, Paris. I've had luck at. Some places that I haven't had much luck at, I'm not going to maim unless <clears throat> Aria. Sorry, but I really gave that casino a chance and I was there for an hour each time and honestly, I had no luck whatsoever, both times. So we already kind of touched on the weather, but let's go in a little bit more detail about the weather. So you get extreme hot and you get extreme cold. That's what makes this place a desert. Plants can't live and freeze and they can't live in extreme temperatures. But Las Vegas is one of those places that really only has one month in between where the weather is perfect. But outside of that, summers are hot, winters are very cold. You'd be surprised. Vegas doesn't have the most ideal weather. And also while in Las Vegas, you can do a tour to the Hoover Dam and see the hydroelectric power plant. Also, you can take a helicopter tour to the Grand Canyon. Las Vegas is actually one of the closest areas to the Grand Canyon when it comes to big cities. So if you've ever wanted to go there, Vegas is your destination. Also, they have the Valley of Fire, a place where they have really cool geological formations, as well as a good place to do some hiking and take some pictures. Also have some Native American petroglyphs. Nearby is also Death Valley. I thought I'd throw that in there. Las Vegas has a population of 2 million people. And did you know it's also the number one most visited tourist destination in the United States? It's usually competing with New York, Orlando, and then Vegas. But as of 2022, the data came out. They said Las Vegas was the most popular tourist destination in America. My best advice to you guys would be watch our other video about the 50 best things to do in Las Vegas so you guys have an idea of what to do when you're here, but also remain flexible. Be flexible with your plans. You never know. You could hit it big and that changes everything for you. You're going from cruising around in an Uber to a limo. See you guys on the next one. Watch our full travel guide by clicking the top one and then watch our 50 things to do video by clicking the bottom video in the end screen. And click subscribe for more awesome travel content.